433, contact support you today. Good day, sir, American 433. Southwest 229, thanks for your patience. Today I'd like to talk about how to fly an accurate IOS. In order to fly an accurate IOS, there's a few things we need to know about how we fly an IOS. Some of those things are based on some of the basics that we learn early on in flight training. One of those basics has to do with what does one degree equal? We know if we start at point A and we fly a heading of 090 for 60 nautical miles, we will end up at point B. But if we fly a heading of 091 for that 60 nautical miles, we'll end up at point C. And we know that the distance between point B and C is one nautical mile. Therefore, one degree equals a nautical mile at 60 nautical miles. Now, if we reduce this down to feet, a nautical mile is a little over 6,000 feet, but we're going to use 6,000 because that's close enough. So one degree equals 6,000 feet at 60 nautical miles. If we reduce this down, we come up with one degree equals 100 feet per nautical mile. If we're traveling 120 knots, any correction we make up or down, left or right, of one degree will change our position by 200 feet because we're correcting 200 feet in one minute. Okay. If we're in 30 seconds for that one degree, we'll correct 100 feet. If we're doing 60 knots, then one mile is 100 feet. But if we're doing 120 knots, it will still be 100 feet per mile, but we're going to be going two miles a minute. So using the time of two miles per minute at 120, or a mile and a half at 90, or one mile at 60, it shows us that the airplane is correcting very quickly with just a small amount of correction. How often do you use one degree? Usually we make corrections of five degrees, three degrees, 10 degrees. So you can see how quickly you can get off course. And we're gonna discuss in just a moment the accuracy of the horizontal situation indicator when being used with an ILS. Okay, let's talk about how to use the HSI in that one degree per hundred foot per nautical mile and how that comes into play. On a VOR, if we're using our HSI while shooting a VOR approach or tracking a VOR, each of these marks right here is equal to two degrees and that gives us our two, four, six, eight, ten degrees of deflection from the center to the case edge. But an ILS is four times more sensitive, so each of these is a half degree, so we have a half, one, one and a half, two, and two and a half degrees full scale deflection. Okay, that means from case to case, five degrees for an ILS, case edge to case edge. Now, regarding the glide slope from on glide slope to all the way off the glide slope, the maximum deflection, that's seven tenths of a degree. Pretty, pretty tight uh, scale right there. You have 1.4 from the bottom to the top of the case. So that's the total width of the glide slope. So we've got five degrees total width for the localizer and 1.4 degrees for the glide slope. Now what does this mean to us? Well, it means that uh, this is very tight tolerances and if we're flying an ILS, we need to keep in mind that every move we make on this per degree is going to correct 100 feet per nautical mile. If we're going two nautical miles per minute, again as we said earlier, you will correct 100 feet in 30 seconds, 200 feet in one minute because it's 100 feet per nautical mile and we're going two nautical miles per minute. If we're doing 90, that's a mile and a half in a minute, we'll correct 150 feet. If we're doing 60 knots, we'll correct 100 feet. All right, now let's talk about flying the ILS and how accurate we need to be and how to maintain that accuracy. If we're doing the hold in lieu of procedure turn and coming onto the glides, uh, the localizer coming out of the hold, okay, we will see the localizer come alive at about 2,500 feet prior to the center line. We'll start to see the case break on the needle. And once we cross the VOR, we're seven and a half miles out, we're seeing this 
width of the uh, localizer decreasing. And at five miles, since it was 2,500 feet out here at 10 miles, at half the distance, it's 1,250 feet, okay? Now let's use halfway between the ATP standard and the instrument rating standard. The instrument rating standard being three-quarter scale deflection, the ATP standard being quarter scale deflection. We'll use half. So half scale deflection at five miles on that localizer, if it's 1,250 feet, we've got 625 feet that we can be off course left or right of the localizer. Let's get down to the real nitty gritty when we're getting in close the last couple of miles. So at two miles, at 2.5, that would be 500 feet. 2.5 times two times 100 feet, be 500 feet. Half scale deflection, 250 feet left or right of course. At one mile, it's gonna be half of that. Now we're down to 125 feet that we can be off course for uh, half scale deflection. And of course, as we break out, that's usually at about a half a mile. Now we're down to 62 and a half feet left or right of course that we can be on the localizer. Not a whole lot of correction. Remember, we said we can correct 100 feet per minute at uh, going 60. If we're doing 120, we're correcting 200 feet per minute. So small corrections is all it takes to get back on course. Let's talk about the glide slope. And for the glide slope, we really don't need to talk about way out here. We said it was 7 tenths of a degree. Let's just look at those last couple of miles. The last couple of miles where it's most important you're getting close to the ground. You need to be lined up with the runway left to right and on glide slope to make sure you don't hit anything on the ground. So 0.7 times 2 is 1.4 times 100 is 140 feet. That's full scale deflection of the glide slope above or below the center line. If we're looking for half scale deflection to be our, our target maximum that we want to be off, then we're talking 70 feet at two miles. And at one mile, we're talking 35 feet. And at a half a mile when we break out, that's 17 and a half feet. Not much off course to, to correct this. If you make big pitch changes while flying the glide slope, you're going to lose this whole thing. And remember one thing, when you make pitch changes, if you pitch above the horizon, the airplane will slow down, and if it slows down, that changes everything. Now you're not in trim, so small pitch changes, small course corrections. We should never pitch more than to the horizon or a few degrees below, two, maybe three degrees below to correct. And for left or right, we never need to have more than a five to 10 degree maximum course correction coming back to the glide slope. We should never get that far off anyway. But if you're banking 20, 25 degrees, you're way over banking. Bank angles of five to 10 degrees maximum are all that's required to fly an accurate ILS and small pitch changes. Cross runway 10 left, it's uh, Delta 12 and then Echo 12 to the ramp, Southwest 229.